Welcome back everybody, Maya here from Maya Quests, and we are back in my little stone hut. Nothing special still. I have been grinding away at gathering resources, so I have a lot of resources now. Not, well, not a lot, but enough to get things going. You may remember on our last video, we were outside working on our little create contraption, little cobblestone generator, nothing too special. Uh, after it was done, I did Fix it up a little bit more, made it a little more efficient, look a little nicer. So I'll show you that in a moment. I also wanted to go over what happened in between episodes. I had a whole nother episode filmed, but it didn't work out right. If you'll remember me bragging about how great my audio was going to be moving forward, I was wrong. The audio from the rest of the files had gotten fairly corrupted. Apologies, my friends, but you have missed some stuff. I attempted to make an iron farm without the right resources. The lost footage was mainly of that. I did manage to salvage a little time lapse from it, which I will show after this. But yes, we have a half of an iron column farm out there, which is not producing anything yet. I still need to move villagers in and get a zombie out there to scare them. And uh, then the Iron Golem farm will be up. I imagine that that won't be too much of a problem. And then I have another project planned for later today. I also have a lot to show you around the area, the general base area. Now, I haven't built anything special. I've put some stairways in. I've cleaned up some areas, um, cleaned out some areas. And mainly, like I said, just resource gathered. We don't have to do a whole lot of talking here this time. I'm just going to get to that little bit of a time lapse, show you how the iron farm progressed in the lost footage, and then we'll get back to things.
Okay, as you can see, the iron farm is nothing special, but wasn't quite done yet. Really quick here, a little bit of storage I've thrown in. Not full, but it's basic materials and bulk storage kind of thing for the time being. Um, yep, it's getting too cluttered out here, so I needed to move some stuff in there, make the place look a little better. Not that this is any kind of final by any means. This is still all just temporary. I dug that out. You guys saw some of it in last episode's time lapse, but yes, I've dug this whole big area out. That there continues on to the big indoor cave. I believe I'm going to make this my main living area. I'm um, still thinking things out, planning some things. Stepping out in the front of our base, we have the new create machine. It's slightly upgraded, looking a little nicer. I'm gathering my metals here for later processing once I get everything set up. Uh, with create, you can improve the amount of uh, materials you gain from processing them. So I can get more iron, well, more coppers, let's say. Iron's going to be coming mainly from my iron farm, which is going to be awesome. Um, as you can see, a little view here of what's progressed. This place, while it looks amazing, has been pretty dangerous. I've been stuck up on a couple times by creepers and died to their explosions. Lost this area, you may remember it looked a little different last time. Yep, they blew up all the chests at one point and I somehow managed to lose a bunch of material from it. So I had to create more create stuff. But we're back in action. This is all working. Here's a little lever. Down there, got it. This will turn off the system if I need to. If I'm overwhelmed with cobble, this is just hiding some of the gears. But, yep. Oh, this is extra gravel. As you can see, it's piling up. Threw some wheat in there. I might turn some of this into slime, but talk a little bit more about that later. Down in our farm area, it's a little bit of a farm. Got a small pen full of animals there. I've got my little tree farm that I've been getting wood from. And now I've started an acacia tree farm. We're going to see how that turns out. I've got sugar cane. I went on a journey with that nature's compass, which probably saved me days of searching. And I was able to find some bamboo, which is great. I'm going to need it for scaffolding. Uh, right there, I've got a few birch. I haven't found a whole lot of birch around here, and I do like using that wood with certain pallets. So, yeah. Built a, a little better stairway here so I don't have to keep searching around for it every time. Um, use some of this cobble brick, I believe it's called, from Quark. Kind of liking it. Nice change from cobble. So testing things out. Um, I cleared this area out. This is uh, where I'm going to put uh, my second contraption from Create. Uh, I've got a little idea for something I want to put here. So I got it, I prepped it, and we're going to do that just a little later. First, we want to finish off the iron farm. Here's the iron farm. It's prepped and ready to go. I've got that to help the zombie fall in there once I get one up here. I also have a little pathway here to draw some villagers in, which they cannot escape from here. So I'll come here, close them off, get out, and lock them in for good right here i've gathered up some of the supplies i'm going to need just to finish up the build um and then we got the water source up there golems will spawn up there fall down into our collection system down there and be roasted now i've made a lot of these farms in the past and one thing that's very important that i always forget is placement now these farms like to break for very various reasons and um, you can reset them it's not that big of a deal but you can cut down on the things that break the farm if you make them properly and one of the things that can break a farm is chunk placement as you can see here I've turned on the chunk borders and if you look at this farm the active area for it the inside and the Spawning area for the golems, the water, hard to tell right now. 
But uh, it's all within the chunk border, just barely. But that is enough. Now, when I remembered that I had forgotten to look at where I placed this iron farm, I came up and I checked the chunk border and it was one over. So this bed was on this side and one sliver of the farm here was in the wrong chunk. So I went ahead and I moved everything, including the catcher, the cooker, whatever you want to call it, over one block. And now it's all lined up right. We should not see any breaking due to chunk border errors, loading and unloading. So it's nighttime. Why don't we go see if we can't find a zombie? Not many out there. The place looks pretty dead tonight. But let's get on this. Right, get some gear on. I have died a lot. Hope to not add too many more deaths to it in this episode. Hey, buddy. Want to be money? Oh, no. Really? I don't have any blocks. We're off to a great start. All right. This guy is going to go in with no issue. Just watch. All right, here we go. Come on, buddy. No problem. Ha <laughs> ha. Cool. Ooh. Trap door, though. He really is jumping a lot higher than he normally would. We need to get that out of there. Um, let's see, F3, G. Nope. That was F2 and G. F3, G, chunk borders. F3 and B. That's the one we're looking for. Don't want to hit him. Hey, he's holding something. Awesome. Now, with him holding that, it will keep him from despawning, but I did prep a name tag, so I'll go ahead and name him anyway. He also is still bouncing way too much. I think I put the soul sand and water one block too high, which is going to be great. Oh boy, that was a good one. I don't know what I was thinking there. I was trying to reach around and get the distant block placement from Quark, but the little cursor thing never popped up for the placement. So I went a little further looking for that and fell off into my trap. I'm sure I lost some stuff this time. Day 101. There has been a lot of material gathered since the last episode. Oh, my gold sword. My gold sword. My diamond sword. Let's see, I put in a new stairway down here. Okay, I lost my bucket of water for sure, which I'm going to need to get a new one. Happy I kept the food. Don't have a whole lot to be going and throwing that away. The em block of emerald? Yes. I would have been bombed if I lost that at that point. Um, ah, I lost the soul sand. I think I still got some more. Okay, as you can see, we have the zombie in the hole, and he's at the right height now, and he's got a little plug on top so the villagers won't be freaked out when I get him up here and run off. So, next step, let's go get those villagers. Gonna need three of... Whoa! <laughs> 
I don't need to die again right away. I've died too much. So I'm going to need three villagers for up there. I've got to um, put some villagers down in a hole and bred them way back at this point. And I haven't looked at them since, so I'm hoping they're still there and available. All right. There we go. They're under here. Hopefully. Yes. All right, let's see how many we got. Five of them, looks like. So... I am going to put two of them in boats and then drag the rest along. Actually, I might want to put more of them in boats just so they don't push each other off that little stairway, the dirt stairway I built. Come okay with me. Now I've got this guy and this guy over here. Could make it really easy. I'm gonna try to bring them first. back when I was lowering the soul sand and water by a block so that the zombie didn't bounce too high, I let some of the water dribble over the side and get away from me. It ruined my lava. Now while I do this all the time on accident while making these stupid things, I don't have diamond, a diamond pickaxe right now. I don't have, I think I have one diamond in my box, but yeah, I need to go farm some diamonds. There's a bunch of diamonds available exposed down in the lava area, which I've been saving to show you guys and see how many we can get by farming them all up. So I guess no better time than the present, right? Let's go get them. Oh yeah. I watched the slime spawn right in there. So this is a slime chunk. I uh, feel pretty lucky to have found one so early. Um, I'm not going to make the slime farm for just a, a bit, but this will be a slime farm eventually. I need silk touch before I can make it properly, so there's at least that blocking the way. There we have the big lava cave. Over here is just some supplies I've been gathering. Nothing special. Yep, yeah, that's what we're looking at. Tinker Construct stuff. I'm going to put my Tinker Station down here, um, among some other things. Probably going to move it out a little more in the middle of the lava. I've done more clearing, more lighting up. But we are here for diamonds. So let's begin our hunt around this ring and see how many diamonds we can find.
And we're back. If you would have guessed that we found 17 diamonds while mining down there, you would be wrong. As you can see, we have 56. Not too bad. That's from no fortune. This little iron pick did it all. So that was a lot of exposed diamond down there. That is going to be nice. Let's go ahead and make one of those guys too. Um, this looks good for now. We're rich. Let's see, I'm not going to need that anymore for now. We got pretty much everything set up. Let's go finish that iron farm. And there we are. I believe this is all set up properly. But with a little bit of testing, we'll see. Now, iron golems will spawn in a 20 block radius around the scared villagers. So I've gone around and I've cleaned up any possible spawn area that they could spawn on other than that little pad right there, I believe. So I'm pretty sure it is ready. Let's go open this thing up and see if we can produce iron. And we have our first golem. Oh boy, can I do this? I cannot. Why did I try that? I'm a fool. At least I shouldn't have lost anything that time. And there we go. Four ingots and two puppies. As you can see it pushes them forward, locks them into place here. This should happen every time to the golems. They shouldn't be able to get out of this cage. And then boop, you just saw the poppy. And yep, eight and four. We are rolling. This is great, guys. What? Wow. I don't know why that creeper didn't blow up everything else. And I was left with a heart. Thankfully. But I was not expecting him to find his way up here. I need slabs. I'll fix that later. Wow. Um. Okay. Where was I? Okay, we have our iron golem farm here completed. It could be a little prettier, but it is effective and it's working and it's for the most part shouldn't break at all. Now the way the spawn works for these is these guys get scared by the zombie and that causes a golem to spawn. The golem can spawn, as I said, in a 20 block radius around, and I've made it so that these nine blocks right here under the water are the only things that it can spawn on. It spawns, gets pushed off, is out of their detection in no time. What that does is it restarts the clock so that another one can spawn sooner and get to cooking. Once one is out of their range, there is a minimum of a 30 second timer before they can spawn another one. So 
the sooner you can get them out of their range, the better. They can start working on spawning that next golem. Now, the other thing with their timers is these guys, they lose all fear if they don't sleep at least once every 20 minutes. So, when night falls, they will sleep because the zombie here is bouncing below this little slab line right there. You can see the blue line coming off of the zombie's face. That's his line of sight. And it's well below being able to see them. So if it was nighttime, every time it bounces down, they'd have an opportunity to jump in bed and sleep. For the most part, it shouldn't break. And it should keep generating no problem. There are small occasions um, leaving the chunk at the wrong time and then being gone too long, possibly, I think, where it can break it. But for the most part, this should be fine. If we do find that there is breakage of this farm, I can add a little extra sticky piston contraption and a, a, a trip wire on the end here so that when the golem falls off, he would set off the trip wire, which would lower the sticky piston, which would allow them to then sleep because they fully lose view of him, of the zombie. So, yep. That's basically how it works, and we are cooking. So the Quark mod adds something called mob skulls or skulls on a pike or something like that. Pretty much if you have a mob head and you put it on a fence, it will keep mobs away from you in a, in a certain radius around it. Which would be great because this area is dangerous and I the more protection I can have from enemies coming after me, the better. Here we have a zombie villager head. Don't know if this is going to work. The mod may require that it be a real regular zombie skeleton or creeper for this to work. I am not sure. But this is the only mob head I've gotten so far, so I figured I'd try it out. Now, if it does have to be a zombie skeleton or creeper, that's going to be rough because I'm pretty sure... The only way I can get them is with a charged creeper explosion, which isn't the easiest to set up. And I've seen it rain here, but I have not seen lightning. So anyway, next we're going to work on this area.